Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome back for some more Love Bites. We have uh, Epilogue loaded up, ready to go today. Uh, it's going to be a double shot for you, so we have Epilogue, the studio version, as well as the, uh, uh, with subtitles, Daughters of the Dawn, live in Tokyo from 2019. I have it on uh, good authority that this is an excellent live performance so i'm excited to dig into this which we will in just a minute before we do a couple of things so if you're watching this video on youtube here's what you need to know this video is the first of three love bites reactions that i've recorded today the first one being edge of the world took a second a little bit a little bit still sleep sleep deprived <laughs> Uh, Edge of the World. So we, we looked at that earlier. Um, and that one is live on the Patreon right now. And we also took a look at Empty Daydream. Uh, also, so all three of these videos are double shots, uh, both the studio version with a live performance to accompany them. Now, the, the thing about this being this video goes right to YouTube. So epilogue hits YouTube um, in a week. Empty Daydream will hit YouTube, okay? But it is live on the Patreon right now. So if you want to go check that out, um, all you have to do, click the link in the description, go over to the Patreon. You can sub up to the Patreon for $1. $1 gets you access to my early access videos. Um, so you'll be able to check out uh, this one on YouTube and then Empty Daydream before it hits YouTube for a scant $1 a month. And again, I have no problem if you cancel immediately. I have no problem if you're just like, here, take the dollar and then cancel the subscription and then never think about it again. No problem with that. Now, Edge of the World is specifically for uh, those uh, uh, patrons on the cover charge tier. So my supporters who have elected the uh, $3.50 tier. So for $3.50, um, they get access or you could get access to all of my exclusive content uh, on the Patreon, in addition to also getting access to all of the, uh, the the early access stuff that we do. I do it this way because if you're supporting me through the Patreon, and if you're on the cover charge tier, the three the 350 a month, then you deserve something exclusive uh, that, that nobody else gets to see. So um, this is kind of like the, the best way uh, at, at the moment that I can think to, to distribute my content. I think I've mentioned this before, but I don't feel great about putting stuff behind a paywall personally. But at the same time, if you're subscribed to the Patreon and it, like you should get something like you should have something uh, for for the support. So um, this is what we're doing. This is what it is. So, of course, uh, plenty of ways to support your favorite creator. Uh, obviously, you don't have to sub up to anything. The fact that you're just watching this video is amazing and support enough in and of itself. Uh, and if you don't mind waiting a week for Empty Daydream to hit YouTube, then by all means, wait away. Um, no issues, no problems on this end of the camera, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, that's enough talk for me. We're going to go ahead and dig into the studio version of Epilogue. Uh, this is from the Clockwork Immortality album, and uh, I really love this album art. I do. I think it's awesome. All right, here we go. Tommy really showing her range here. If you have never been hard, you can't feel the pain of others. I will believe myself. Will never oh. be Good Lord, woman. You will believe yourself. We are the 
I'm gonna pause it just because I want to make a couple of comments. So, um, first of all, Asami, good lord, woman, really just the the, the pipes. And I, I actually think too, this is more expressive than than she was in Edge of the World. Uh, but what I like about this too is that it it has the same kind of feel that Edge of the World did, where it's like this layered thing, where it starts off somewhere out in in the woods. And it really gives the sense that they're they're building towards something. So uh, uh, really enjoyable. All right, so we'll take it back maybe five seconds or so, and then we'll keep going. If you have never failed, you can be happy for success. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause. Just because, like, you're getting hints that the that the thing is coming, and so I really like that it's very like it's it's almost like that it's titrated, right? The, the 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 layers are kind of titrated in this one, so it's like just a little bit, just a little bit. It's like oh, it, like you can hear you know Miho's bass, and you're like oh, that like that that's a precursor to the freight train that's about to come through the station. And then that like beautiful little acoustic guitar lick too, like, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. We're, we're we're about to get into some stuff, so uh, we'll take it back a couple of seconds and then keep going. So definitely a couple of things. First of all, I think this is probably my favorite vocal performance from Asami. Not not gonna lie, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, I I didn't even realize that her, what would you say, like her range. Um. Well, really, what it is is what it is is that I should have known that whatever approach any of any of these band members decide to take, like whatever whatever they throw themselves at, they're gonna execute. At the at the level that we're accustomed to, Love Bites executing at. So they're not like Asami isn't going to take on a song like this if um sh she doesn't have the the capacity to do it. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean it's not marvelous in its presentation. Second note: the guitar work in this is. It, immensely emotive so there's so much feeling and passion like it, it really is like the the feeling that asami is is bringing out with, with her with her vocals 
is mirrored by what's going on with the guitar work. And so it's very melodic, very expressive, very emotional. Uh, and it, it like it's like a lock and key, man. It fits right into the groove of the song. And number three, this is the last point that I'll make and then we'll keep going. Um, this section... I really like that. Again, it's like they're t like it's titrating this. It's titrating the the love bites because I felt the transition happen right. And and Haruna really kind of led the the transition um, specifically like with the double bass when that came in. You got a little bit of the love bites flavor, and like my ear and my heart wanted to like to dig in to the meat of it. And then they kind of pulled back. They pulled back. It's like they they really understand how to. Um, like how, how to how to play on your emotions as as a listener uh, to like, you know, what's coming. But they're like, mm, not yet. It's not the right time yet. It's not the right time. Listen, listen. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going. Ooh, almost. They were like, we're going to do it. That was pretty fucking great, actually. Um, definitely feels like the closing number for for an album. Um, and I think in terms of technicality, probably the... Well, no, I mean, it was still really technical, but th there wasn't as much flash as um, 
as in any of the other Love Bites tracks that, that we've looked at. And so I think that really speaks to the band's ability too, because the it, sometimes you can rely, you can like over rely on your technical ability and your flashiness to kind of like cover up for the fact that you can't actually write songs all that well. And so um, I, I really like this different uh, side of Love Bites because it, it really, like my sense was that they could pretty much do anything that they wanted to do, right? But to actually hear that, yeah, they can dial it back. They can do this, like, very open, uh, capacious, kind of down-tempo um, ballad. And w without needing to rely on, you know, blistering guitar solos or, um, you know, playing 210 beats per minute or something. To, you know, so really, I, I think in context... Uh, actually, I, you know, I was, I was going to say in context of the, the tracks that we've listened to on the channel, but I think even probably in context the, of the album, um, this track really kind of closes things out. It really kind of, it really feels like, um, this is, it, it like kind of ties up the loose ends at the end of an album kind of thing. So, uh, really enjoyed it and I'm psyched for the live version because you know the the studio stuff is great but they always bring the heat in the live version so let's dig in hmm yo hmm Good lord, those guitars sound beautiful. If you have never cried, your eyes can be so beautiful. If you have never been hurt, you can't feel the pain. Chills like cover. You will believe yourself. We are the only one. Yo, listen to how effortless, how effortless, and I'm, I, I know I pause, but how effortless this freaking high note is. Listen. And I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because I legitimately love the fuck out of this. You know, I talk a lot about contrast on this channel. And I talk a lot about silence as its own instrument. And really, 
unless you're clued in, then you don't necessarily notice it. You don't necessarily notice that uh, how powerful these silences can be. And so what I think is really beautiful about this is that Asami, like her, her vocal line is, is uh, legato. So it's, you know, it's, it's very fluid and that's mirrored in the, in, in, in the instrumentation. And so the, the, the guitars and the piano um, are, are also very fluid. The bass is very fluid. It's all very legato, but there's this one little, there's this one little accent. There's one little, one little staccato note from the musical accompaniment um, that sort of highlights this fact, right? Because uh, Asami, Asami doesn't, uh, uh, Asami remains legato, but the the guitar specifically, um, there's this staccato note, and it really serves to to um, the, the silence that that it creates uh, is, uh, has an impact, right? Listen. Yeah.
That little skip there? Hmm. Again. Oh my god, it's so good! It's so good! Yo! Four times! Four times they got me with that. So the, oh man, there's, there's really a lot to unpack in this. So the, the guitar work really in the last section of the song, after Midori's solo, the, the harmonies that come from, you, you know, between Miyako and Midori are some of the most beautiful uh, arrangement or harmony or, or like, just like, Ugh, that I've ever heard. And what I think is really cool too, uh, I mentioned this in the uh, Edge of the World reaction, which is live on the Patreon, um, 350 a month. You can go check that out. I'll get you exclusive access to a lot of my content. But um, in Edge of the World, I, I made a comment about how the, uh, like the, the, the engineering for the, the live stuff, the, so like the audio engineering, is just masterful. Right. Whoever like is responsible for miking this, mixing this and recording this like they're the gold standard. These harmonies in the guitar, like what's really cool, too, is that like, you know. Miyako's guitar is on one side, Midori's is on the other. But when you listen, provided you have like a, a good set of headphones, because if you have scrub headphones and you probably won't get the detail, but you can hear each guitar by itself and how they complement each other, right? They're not just playing the same thing, right? They're not even just playing the same thing kind of harmonized. There's this like very, um, very subtle, very well-written, very well-orchestrated and executed convergence of uh, uh, melody, you know? So, so the melody, like neither guitarist is carrying the melody, but together, right? Together, they're like splitting the melody line and it's, it's just, it's exceptional, exceptional. You know what? That's it. I'm just going to let it play. And that's going to be the end of the video. That's what we're going to do. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, go check out the Patreon for more love bite stuff. Uh, uh, you know, just, <laughs>